leyenda oscura que se ha creado a nuestro alrededor se debe principalmente a la ignorancia. Espero que puedan apreciar un poquito más a nuestra humilde colonia. Afuera hay un lobo. ¿Hay algún chileno aquí? Hola, tengo de la colonia. Voy a transformar a mi cerdito en criatura hermosa que nunca me abandonará. Desde hoy son Pedro y Ana. ¿Qué les parece si jugamos? Un juego divertido que inventé. So let me talk about you guys with my students and with the teachers, but I'm going to do it in Turkish and okay. they can understand that a little bit better, you know. Arkadaşlar herkese merhaba. Bugün Joaquin Costinha and Cristobal Leon ile birlikteyiz. Kendileri Şil'de yaşıyor. Bugün yönetmenim, yönetmenimizin birçok filmi bulunmakta. Biz de bu röportajı, bu görüşmeyi özellikle La Casa Lobo üzerinden yapmayı düşünüyoruz. Bir takım Detay sorulara ineceğiz, onların sanat hakkındaki görüşlerinden bahsedeceğiz, bunlardan faydalanmaya çalışacağız. Ve umarım bu görüşme, bu röportaj hem kendi öğrencilerimiz için hem de sanatla uğraşan insanlar için faydalı olur. We can start with my students' general opinions about your La Casa Lobo. Okay? Okay. One of my students called Seçkin. Seçkin says, when I watch the movie, I have felt some kind of pressure stress a forcing on me what i have seen that there is an expression of freedom which is not real on behalf of the characters specifically for maria the background noises and the sound effects in general were very threatening aygül melek states that arrangement of sound effects lightning and the editing as a whole are very impressive it is really being seen that there is a massive deliberation behind of this project Dennis Chetin said that scenes which are progressively enhancing the tension make me stay like a, uh, like a stone. And also she stated that sound effects were striking. As you can hear, like they are gathered on some specific points, which is like uh, sound effects. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very, it's very impressive for me and for them too, I think. So what do you think about their opinions in general? First of all, uh, thanks for the invitation. Thanks, Ram, for reaching out to us. It's nice to hear the opinions. Uh, yeah, of course. And we have to, a lot of the opinions are um, referred to, to the sound design of the movie, and we have to give credit to, to our sound designer, uh, whose name is Claudio Vargas. He had a very important uh, role in the movie. We have to uh, name him because he was a very important person in, in the process of this movie. I just want to say thank you. There are like super nice words. It is nice to hear that you like the film. We imagine the film um, a lot like um, like an amusement park attraction, mm-hmm. like an experience that you enter a, a tunnel and and then you have like a, a confusing experience and then you go out and it and it's like one thing. And yeah. of course, there was some kind of pressure on me when I watched the movie, but at the same time, I really felt like. I don't know how to say intriguing, you know, 
it really mm -hmm. attached on my feelings. Like when we were producing the film, you know, we were writing at the same time while we were like working. One thing that we realized quite soon, it was that we were we will not be able to have much uh, lines dialogues uh, because uh, it was too difficult to have like the subtitles because also you have Spanish and German. So even if you are a Spanish speaker, you will have to read some some German so subtitles. So we we said okay, we realized that we will not be able you know to have much dialogues because it will be impossible you know to do that all the time. At some point, we realized too that the film could be like difficult or strange but it will not be boring because you have no time to get bored no no like... i don't i don't i, I don't really think so yeah. i don't know it, it, it was a possibility of course yeah of course there are like plenty of uh, audiences you know they have different tastes of course Maybe yeah. some of them get bored or i think majority of them cannot bore if you let me i can go with the technical questions you know yeah please so the characters i think have made from cardboards papers and something else. Where did this idea come from and was there any other idea in your mind apart yeah. from like cardboard papers? You know we've been we've been working with these materials for a while I mean not, not only in this field I don't mm -hmm. remember uh, that we were questioning uh, much this well well you have also the the, the painting of course and yeah, yeah, yeah. many many for times sure. in, the, in the film the characters appear as mm -hmm painted you know on the walls I, I think it was very clear for us that we would mostly use the techniques that we used in our previous films so yeah in any case we were we had these like 10 rules we made these 10 rules before starting the shooting there were like 10 technical rules and one of the rules was that everything is material and can be transformed furniture cardboard painting mm. you know color, the sound so everything is can be you know like transformed and then that, that in a way allow us to use every sort of material so we were using basically like cheap materials yeah but it's basically like we didn't bought much cardboard you know like it was on the street so mm -hmm. we were we use this painting that is the cheapest painting that you can use to paint we were trying to to use the cheapest and simplest materials that you can use don't think in that not thinking about uh continuity so mm -hmm. you, for us what's important that the, the the characters were like being materialized in different materials of course or in different shapes and ways uh so you feel that it's an like a phantom or an entity that goes into the materials and transform the materials you know into mm -hmm. a character so that was one thing about the materials that were like using yeah yeah, some other thing is like we use the material decisions are often based on very simple facts. For example, the paper that we use that is this, you know, like a, ah, okay, like a masking paper, masking mm -hmm, paper, mm -hmm. you know? um, and we use that because it's always dry. So it, yeah. it's a material that you can easily like mm, uh, yeah. Things. But for animation, it's very important that it's always dry. I mean, it's a, it's it makes it easier to uh, manipulate and change and control. Uh, so, and it's relatively cheap. And so, like many of the decisions have to do with this. Also, it's non-toxic. Um, we, we try not to use in our studio like toxic materials. Yeah. So, so it's really like um, sometimes like daily life things define the materials that we that we use we have this rule that Cristobal said that we try not to work with like chemicals you know like with chemicals yeah. that makes you sick and also we we cannot use uh, bottles of water to put chemicals on the side because we will end up <laughs> yeah uh, so we try to keep it simple simple yeah I don't know like we I, I, it's also uh, it's also something that we have to we have to admit that we were for us, La Casa Lobo is, is not a starting point. It's like the, the finish line of something that we were doing before. So we yeah. started to work like, like in 2007, uh, we made a short film called Lucia. Yeah. And then we have Los Andes or the Andes, you can say it in English. Yeah, 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 Los Andes, yeah. There. Uh, and, th and then we started to do another kind of stuff with actors and blah, blah. And at some point we said, okay, let's make the last stop motion in that style and let's make the better version of that the better version of our 
approach to stop motion. It's in a way, it's a film that tries to create all the time new thing, new ways of animating, but for us, it's actually like an, an end. Now we don't want to do that kind of animation anymore because we spent like five years working on that. Wow, it's okay. Yeah. We cannot do that anymore. So we can say that this was, I mean, La Casa Lobo is a punchline for you? Yeah, a punchline in that line of work. Normally, like the way the way we shoot, the way we use materials, the way we move the camera, like a, a lot of many different formal and material dimensions of the work, probably La Casa Lobo is the last work, probably, I say probably, you never know, but probably it's the last <laughs> yeah. Uh, we we made like that and it, and it's the result of a long experimentation in short films that was a good line <laughs> <laughs> well i mean if like a solobo will be your like final uh, stop motion movie in that way in that sense i think yeah. this is a good final for sure <laughs> So let's go with another technical question. So you have used plenty of auxiliary, like assistant equipments, such as masking tape, paste, dye, and so on. So how did you maintain this process? Because we are talking about five years of production, right? Was it costly or was it budget friendly? When you compare it with your other works. I can tell you the, the, the final budget, which is, we, we know now that it's ridiculous for a future film. Apparently, uh, it's like uh, it's like two hundred thousand dollars more yeah. or less. Yeah, uh, which is not so low, but it's of course for a I don't know like an American production would be like super super low. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, but if you divide that in five years, it's also not it's not so high. I don't know if you know this, but uh, so there were there were galleries and museums and yeah. mm -hmm. some of the money. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of, some of the energy too went uh, to these exhibitions and not directly to the film. So it's like, yes, we made one film with that money, but we also made like 15 exhibitions. <laughs> I don't know, like 10 exhibitions. You know? yeah. so, uh, and some of them like big exhibitions. It was more expensive than the, we, we worked more comfortably than in our previous um, films. Mm -hmm. But like some of our early films were ridiculously like uh, cheap, like, like no money. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> I don't, like the our Lucia, our first short film we made with like practically, I don't know, like fifty dollars, you know, like with nothing. Mm. Uh, furniture that we collected on the street. It was uh, Joaquin's studio, so we didn't pay any studio. Hey, uh, I, I did pay. <laughs> well, well, it, it was super cheap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I mean, you are saying if you find a way to seek for materials like requirement materials, you can make a stop motion movie. Yes, yes. We use time. That's basically yeah. what we use. Uh, and that's what you actually, you have students who are like, of course, younger than us. Like yeah. I, I assume most of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and basically for them, it's even easier, you know, like talking about manage your own time. Uh, mm -hmm. When we started to work together, we were, uh, for some, I don't know how, but I, I was living with no much money. Yeah, I have no kids, which is a big money difference and time. But basically, you, we, what we need is time, time and a space to work. And we use a really regular camera, like a regular tripod, you know, like regular lights. We decide at the beginning of the production that we will not work, change our way of work. So we will yeah. make the, the Wolf House or La Casa Lobo as a long short film. So it's it's the same production, you know, like design. Mm -hmm. uh, just a room, the two of us, maybe a second person, a third person, sorry, uh, mm -hmm. and just time. Yeah, so so we, we have a rule. Money should always pay uh, for the work of people and yeah. Yeah. rather than materials and rather than... Yeah. Techniques are really not important and materials are not so important. Uh, but definitely what you have yeah. to pay and value is the work of people that you have to um, we consider that always and it's it's something important for us when we work for example with new producers that they understand because producers sometimes they say like yeah we have to get the best camera and it's like no we can no. work with the yeah crappiest camera in the market or yeah. the, the the one well that we have even with a yeah, cell no, phone you have to invest in being creative and for that you need time in the studio 
it's our yeah, way to producing interesting uh, things, I think. Even, well, I remember like Claudio Vargas, the sound designer, actually, at some point, he said like, hey, I can take part of my salary to pay a better studio to record the voices. And we said to him like, you know fucking way, you will not touch <laughs> your... I mean, because we also don't believe that, because when you go to a, uh, that's the point, like you think that you are spending something technically in a, in a good way because we are paying a better studio, but yeah. then we studio which was really good and they said like yeah yeah we can actually manage your time properly to make it more efficient and we said like no i don't want to be efficient with my time we spent like five years working in this this is that's not efficient we will not i don't want someone saying to me how to work faster in the, yeah. in the studio what we did as we worked with a couple of like homemade studios some mm -hmm. guys amazing mm -hmm. they were a really important part of the process in creative terms too and we pay less, not because we pay pay bad, just because we pay what they ask. Okay, we pay you that, but we are not paying like the best studio because at the end we are recording a voice. How how expensive can be that? You know, like it happens that I, I don't know if this is the reality in Turkey, but it's definitely what I see in Chile is that many of the students that come from film schools uh, they have. They are very technique technical oriented. They 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 spent a lot of, of their conversations about like the last camera and the last item, blah blah blah. Yeah. The last like. Uh, so we do, we don't come from from a film school. We didn't. But we neither of us study film. So trying to solve things creatively rather than technically. Yeah. The point with techniques that you will never reach. You will never reach the level of the technique that are using. You know the big companies. You will never go to that, but you have one, but you do you, we do have some democratic thing about audiovisual that doesn't really matter if you are using a lot of money or technical stuff, you will get at the end of the film in the same screen, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. it's the same, it's the yeah. same, you have like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, you know, having sex with like a dolly and blah, blah, blah. And if you use your phone, you will have the same format at the end. Yeah. yeah. So actually, you can you 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 don't need to have Angelina Jolie. Well, maybe Angelina Jolie is not a bad idea, but <laughs> not. Definitely. That was yeah, a really bad, bad idea. I didn't ask the most important question. I think. I mean, how did you guys uh, meet in the first place, and how did you decide to get into this industry? Yeah, we are twins. You, <laughs> can can you tell? You are twins. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, we are not. No, no we, we, don't, <laughs> we met. Uh, we met uh, back at the, the university. Yeah, we were not um, classmates, but we we had some friends in common. So uh, I was studying uh, design, and Joaquin was studying art, mm -hmm. and I, I was also studying art. I made like the two careers, and mm -hmm. we were in the fa the same faculty, and and yeah, we knew from that time and then we were not friends actually we barely knew each other but we, then we made the, this short film lucia we mm -hmm. we met in a, in a in an opening Joaquin was showing some drawings and i i told him that we should i, I was i was making animations at that time like with very different techniques and um i proposed to him that we should make a film together then we invited this this third guy Niles Atala, uh, who was a uh, uh, an American guy had recently arrived in Chile, and and we made this short film without knowing each other, yeah. like, ah. and we became friends by doing this short film, and there was a very good like uh, creative chemistry between us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are still the three of us working together. We yeah. share uh, a company. We have a company together of like a production company, mm -hmm. and and that's the story like it was yeah. a very magical and a strange thing that we yeah i remember the uh, first days that we were working together in lucia and uh, it was my studio i remember like you were coming in and you were like eh. <laughs> but i was staying there because i was living there too i had i rent i was renting two rooms in our big apartment mm -hmm. and one room was for sleeping and the other one was for working and i remember me like sitting in the kitchen thinking like what the fuck are we doing I, ha I had no idea, you know, like because uh, I wasn't an animator. I understood, you know, the the principle, the, the main things about it. The main things, like basically frame by frame, that was all. <laughs> yeah. Not that feeling, strange feeling that we were doing something that I didn't, I, I was not understanding yet, 
but it was like going into the fog, you know. I enjoyed our process of doing art when I have that feeling again, you know, like, okay, I'm, we're doing something strange. I'm not pretty sure if it's good, but I don't care if it's good. I mean, it is mm -hmm. and it's strange and we don't know yeah. where we are going. Yeah, it's difficult. I must say that I, I remember those days and, and we were very, very lost. I, I think we, we felt very lost in the by, by when we were doing that film. We we yeah. really were, were like, this looks so ugly. This is so ugly. <laughs> but it's so strange and it's so ugly. And it like, good. Um, I mean, we liked it and we liked that feeling of like. I think we we shared the three of us this feeling of uh, losing control of the the aesthetics it became really ac accidental and really yeah. like a um, chaotic process and and it was good it was good and and I don't think we had we've had anything similar no maybe, of maybe, course not maybe because we were like really naive about it I yeah. mean naive in a good in a good way like we had no we knew that the camera should we didn't even shot in like raw no, 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 no. You know, it was oh. like GPAG. I don't know how you said yeah. that. Really brutal. It was in focus. That was yeah. that. Really, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the main yeah. No, we were like, we were really like, uh, yeah, not in control. But then we became with this rule in our studio that I, I really love that rule that there, we, there is no self critique. Yeah. You know, like everything, we, we assume that everything that we do is like, <laughs> It's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece, which is of course not the case in many in in many cases we're wrong, but but it's but it's really <laughs> not always. Not always. <laughs> no, it's, I think it's a good approach because when you start to think in terms of quality, you mm -hmm. get lost mm -hmm. because you don't know while while you are working if it's the right path or the wrong path, but you have to walk that path. You are not like chasing for greatness right you are not cha you are not chasing for the quality of the movie itself but the meaning of it the thing which conveys to the audiences i think there are two different parts in your question we are not <laughs> <laughs> trying to make a good film is a very bad uh, thing to do i mean we speak about chilean cinema because it's the yeah. context I know, I know the best but it's like it, it, it can apply maybe to every like um, independent uh, cinema scene i see a lot of people trying to make good films to make good movies and and trying to to um, achieve the conditions of what a good movie is and it's only like um, it's a group of cliches things that there's uh, festival programmers like yeah, yeah, but that yeah, yeah. that is not making a good film you know yeah. that's that's not making an interesting film so you you make like a nice film yeah that is going to be in in many festivals i think trying to make to be radical and trying to make something uh, unique and trying to create to create a new being a new cre creature in the world is is what you have to do and and about the second part of your question is like uh, the meaning we don't think much about the meaning in those terms uh, yeah we try to i guess we try to create like environments of meaning or something yeah. like that so or like we work a lot with context and we talk a lot about the way that that the meanings or the symbols or the the subjects appear in the film or what are you which are the the songs that the film is talking with you know it's more like a conversation but we don't we don't believe in like a, a fixed a meaning of the film uh, that yeah. mean, because we i honestly don't believe that art works in that way uh, if for me if a work of art in any media you know it's it can be reduced to a meaning mm -hmm. that means that um, the work is not necessary because you can say the meaning. If you can say the meaning, that's that's the word. You you know we 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 come from from the visual arts. You yeah. know, and and it's very often that in exhibitions you have a text oh explaining, God. in the worst case, explaining the the meaning of the work. And we really try to run away from that. And uh, we don't believe that any director or any artist can be the owner of the meaning of a work. It's like it's like bringing a child to the world and and thinking that you are in control of uh, his or her destiny, yeah. you know, or yeah. what what is going to be in the life. You know, you you cannot. You have to create something free. You have to um, 
to let the world what the world wants to be and yeah. um, and also f yeah. no no please but also in film is a is a format of art that it also needs to bring a lot of stuff in the in the field i mean what i'm trying to say is like when you are doing a painting you have a lot of things coming in but yeah. sometimes you can have a a painting that is no more complex than this, you know, yeah. like a piece of paper. But with film, it's actually almost impossible. You have the sound and the characters, and you have the story, and you have the materials, and you have the time that flows through your film, and you have the background always, and all those, those stuff, you know, it's like opera. So you actually cannot have a mixed meaning. In the minimal case, you have like a meaning contaminated with so many stuff that you, the meaning is lost, you know. You don't have it anymore. And and also, we are very process focused. So we we try not to make a big difference between the process and the work. For example, we imagine the the Wolf House as the documentation of some material processes. It's like the it's like a documentary of making sculptures and making paintings and erasing the paintings and destructing the, the sculptures. Yeah. So we try to make um, works that encapsulate the, the process of doing these works. Um, so so we, we try very hard, uh, sometimes we achieve it, sometimes not, that, that the process becomes the work. A, a very common question that we make when we, when we are in a studio is what, what do we feel like doing? What do we want to do in this moment? Mm. So, so the process is like super, super important for us. Actually, one question that comes a lot is like, how do you manage to keep working for five years? And the basic answer, there are two reasons. One, we really wanted to end the film. <laughs> I mean, to, we really wanted to end the film. Also because we we enjoyed a lot the process. It was a like a super funny process, like a super nice process of uh, being in the studio and working in something that is just a slow process. It is more important to be on the road, right, rather yeah. than the final destination. Totally, totally. totally. We also, totally. It's, it's like it's like a game, you know. We we think always, like Joaquin mentioned before, that the, we created ten rules before we started doing the the Wolf House. It's, and and this is like the rules of like. Uh, football you know it's like for us it's like uh, creating the game the day before yeah. and then starting to play in this game you know yeah. and, and we trust that if the rules are good and that we if we play if we are good players the result is going to be good you know you you see that, that this thing here this, this yeah, like a, yeah the brown one yeah the brown one those are the rules of the short film that that we that we are doing now you know so we oh yeah we always write somewhere in the studio the, the yeah. rule of the of the new game and we start uh, playing. It's always a conversation between a lot of dialogue, I mean, a lot of conversation and also improvisation. Like we, that ru those rules were made the day that we start. Yeah, 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 yeah. This new film. I would like to uh, continue with other uh, students' questions. I'm gonna talk about uh, two different scenes in these two different questions, okay? One of the questions is like, we are witnessing a scene with Maria, uh, Pedrito and Anna. Uh, they are suffering from like hunger, right? So Maria yeah. decided to go outside to seek for food. Anna and Pedro prevented her to go outside because the wolf is uh, in the outside. And all of a sudden there is a bed like which Maria like tied up. So all yeah. of a sudden this bed turns into a dining table for Pedro and Anna. How do you explain this metaphorical uh, exposition? Well, that was, I think you are pointing the faster script jump in the, you have like this slow time going, 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 and she comes to the host and transform the pigs. And then suddenly they are like super evil. In that scene is where Maria realized that what she was trying to build, which was in her point of view, uh, a new family and a better place running mm -hmm. out from this uh, sect that she was mm -hmm. running out. Mm -hmm. And they, she basically um, made also a nightmare. So she built, builds her own like, uh, you know, jail. When she gives the animals something called will, so when, when the character, when Anna and Pedro become actually 
people with names, you know, and blonde and, you know, like uh, closer to her mm -hmm. have will. And they, when they have will, they actually are bad because that's the way that she learned in her sect. I, ha I want to say something <laughs> yeah. about these questions. <laughs> I always regret when I when I answer a question uh, explaining the meaning? The, the meaning of a scene or explaining oh, a yeah. meaning. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a personal thing. I, it's like I, I shouldn't explain. I feel like because yeah, uh, maybe because you want your film to be abstract and deep and mm -hmm, profound, mm -hmm. scenic, like to have many <laughs> different uh, <laughs> meanings. No, and then you explain it. It's like it sounds so simple and so stupid. <laughs> well, we we were inspired by 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 the by the historical case of colonial dignidad of this mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. sect in the in the south of Chile. We um, on purpose didn't mention the name of colonial dignidad uh, in the film because we wanted we didn't want to be fixed to the. Um, historical um, authenticity of, of the of the historical facts of this. Mm -hmm. So we, we thought colonial dignidad as an inspiration, not, yeah. not, not, in, not in the good sense of inspiration. I remember like I showed this film to my son when he was four years old. And he's really afraid of films normally, but not with this one because he knew that it was made by us. So his dad made the film, so OK. <laughs> And he asked me, like, he was looking at the film, uh, like, looking at the film, and then he asked me, like, is the wolf coming in? No, he's outside. Is she in her own mind? <laughs> and I was, oh, that's good, good interpretation of the film. Those, those two questions, you know, like, is yeah. the wolf coming in or is she in her own mind? Uh, that's, I think that, that was a much better, better you know interpretation of the of the scene that what we were thinking at the moment that we were doing that not that scene but another one we're not really good with the uh, continuity we don't we don't like continuity <laughs> i mean i hate to be concerned about that i realized actually that's why i never did made a like a like a comic book because then you have to be careful if the character is the same and blah yeah. that's it's horrible we're also students back in the days and you can think that like when you say something to your students you know as a teacher uh, you have to watch this movie, you know, like it's come, it's coming from like Chile and another country, another continent. They are always seeking for a meaning with every scene, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah totally. So that scene, I, there, there must be a meaning and the other scene, there must be another meaning. And they always yeah. seek for this. I think that's a, that's a problem for it, I think. Probably that's right if you watch a Japanese film. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, it's it's not true for us. Not no. necessarily. Not, a, not 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 at least from our perspective. We are very, we are very very intuitive uh, yeah. people. We like to be surprised by the work. You know that, that that's something about like working uh, in collaboration because it's not about like a reflection of my own personality or my my own consciousness. Is something in between, something that we are creating together. So it's yeah. it can always be the responsibility of the other one. You know, and so. You, <laughs> like, <laughs> Why me? Why always? <laughs> you know, you can be more irresponsible about things, I think. The fact that we don't know exactly the meaning of the scene doesn't mean that the scene doesn't have a meaning. Yeah, but it's, totally. that's totally. We also forget many things. Like, yeah. you know, like we were thinking something and then like we forgot that way of thinking and then we mm -hmm. imagine our films in a different way. Some of the directors say that maybe you would heard of it also. Like when you put something on the screen, this must has a meaning. If you tell a story, they have to like make a connection with this. You are not thinking in the same way, I think. We were conscious that everything that we were putting on the screen, it will have meaning. So we were like actually sort of careful about what we were showing and what not. Mm, the yeah. sleep, some more a lot of like uh, local you know links like character mm -hmm. and stuff like that of course we understand that if you put a cross it will have a meaning you know like it's not like that. Uh, but we like to play with that we are not yeah. i mean that serious as you can see 
the, the point with that is like that you that the creator the director doesn't know the meaning it doesn't mean that there is no meaning yeah <laughs> yeah actually of you course. have many cases where you have the opposite you have someone who thinks that the work is meaningful in one way but it's meaningful mm. it happens a lot that you have works that are racist racist yeah. racist sorry yeah yeah, yeah. And then you realize that actually it was not a conscious decision. It's just yeah, exactly. It just shows up, you know. Like we try to control, of course, uh, some stuff so we will not make a like a fascist film. Mm -hmm. uh, but you are not the owner of the meaning. So yeah, of course, of course, of course. I mean, there are a lot of audiences out there, and they are all have like different conscious, different mindsets, right? Exactly, and also. There are two things about that. The, the, I I had the opportunity to travel a lot showing the film, like from Korea. Like Joaquin couldn't travel yeah. too much because because of the family, the children. But I, I went from Japan, Korea to Colombia, wow. France, Germany, I don't know, many, many different countries. And you realize how different audiences and different cultures react to things, you know, yeah. and like I don't know, in Korea, they would ask, like, what does it mean, the blue dress of Maria? I don't know, like, very precise <laughs> meaning things. And I don't know, in Colombia, they would ask, like, uh, what were your feelings in your childhood yeah. that, that lead you to make this? I don't know, like, like, different cultures and different people have yeah. different uh, approach to, uh, to things, I think. Yeah, and of course, in France, in um, NSE, there were a lot of technical questions. Yeah. One of the big reasons why we create rules before uh, making a film mm -hmm. is because we want to create some kind of unity of meaning. I don't know how to say this. I don't know what, what the right words are, but we, like, for example, we were thinking the Wolf House, the La Casa Lobo, as, as like, a, like an energy river, you know, like, a, like uh. one material and energy flow, like some kind of mm -hmm. monolith that goes from the beginning to the end. Some of the meanings for us, some of the consistency of the film doesn't necessarily have to do with the story of the characters, or not only with that, but also with some kind of um, material dimension of the, 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 the dimension of objects, you know, like mm -hmm. and that we see meaning in that too. Maybe it's because we come from this uh, a visual art uh, context and we are uh, painters and sculptors and we draw before making films you know like so we um yeah it's like th th there is some meaning in a painting even if it's there is no story there you know like yeah. so we see yeah. we, we see the film also like in a sculpture or we see the film as a painting and we see in those um material conditions in how this world uh, behaves we see a meaning on that too i'm gonna go with General ones as a question. So you're adverting a traumatic story in La Casa Lobo. Do you think this movie can affect people in some certain way? Or is there any specific uh, intention you would like to convey to the audience? I think there there is one, one specific thing that we want to make people feel. We don't, I don't like the feeling when you are like, you know, looking at a, a, a film and you have, you know that you cannot do that you know that you will not get the money and you yeah. know that you will not go, go, you never have that team i mean of course i do enjoy big films they're trying to give the impression to uh, to people who wants to do films that you can do it with a couple of coins and some time and you have to just go on that's one thing that i we remember like we were talking about yeah definitely mm -hmm. You mentioned this earlier, but uh, it's a good question also. In some scenes, we feel some sort of relieving, and for some others, we are annoyed, disturbed by what's happening on the screen. How must uh, someone understand this contrast? There's an ups and downs, of course, like uh, as a roller coaster. Like, let's make a film made by this really like uh, evil sect, you know. Everything seemed for us like a very funny and bad idea, as I said. Um, and, and our big challenge was to to put this abstraction and this chaos of the technique we use into something that you, it's watchable. Something uh, we when we were making the film, we thought people will leave the film, the the, the cinema, like at when like ten minutes from the beginning. You know, you know, like uh, of the. Yeah. 
we thought that it would be like unwatchable for anyone and <laughs> we were honestly very surprised that the when we when, when we premiered the film uh, almost anyone like almost no one uh, yeah. left the the the, the theater uh, yeah. but they knew that we were there maybe they <laughs> <laughs> Like, come on, cousin. Um, <laughs> they were like, oh my god. And, the, and, they, and they, they were our family, actually, and friends. <laughs> no, no, no. No, but, but so our big challenge was to make something yeah. kind of entertaining. And these decisions of making different tones in different yeah. scenes have a lot to do with doing something entertaining and do it something that it feels like you know what one of our rules in the in our 10 commandments in our 10 rules were like was uh, this the, the film tries to be a normal film you know yeah. like when it when it becomes too abstract too strange we we said like okay it, it has to go like to kind of a normal yeah film I, I i made a very long answer after, after we made the first uh yeah this the first cut with the voices Mm -hmm. We said, okay, let's divide this in acts. Let's play the act-based script thing. And there were like actually five acts that have the same um, length. 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 Okay, it works. I mean, it's a like, sort of conservative. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, we were like trying to do that with the sound, and also we were pretty conscious when while we were working that we needed to have like a lot of action and then some areas of like. Calm. Just the camera calm going around mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to to calm down in a way, but also to to be able to put some lines to di some dialogues to explain something. I think making films it's a lot like like making music. Mm -hmm. It's film have music, but uh, but in a way the the, the question have to do a lot with this with the making a rhythm of like uh, yeah. mm -hmm. calm and I t tension yeah. and I don't know you have to handle this in a way we didn't ex expect anything actually we we our focus was like mostly enjoy enjoy the work enjoy what we were doing mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. be as radical as we could this year the film was uh, pr was uh, premiered in the US as like uh, in cinemas you know mm -hmm. It wasn't in cinemas because of the pandemic, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was like like uh, if it wasn't so it, it was like the 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 normal premiere in 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 the USA, mm -hmm. um, and the response was like super 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 good, and it even uh, received like some um, recognitions, uh, recognitions that normally are very important, like uh, yeah. thinking in the Oscars in the Oscar. Mm -hmm. you know? And and this was super super strange for us. Like I mean, because it's like we honestly never thought that this um, this film could be in the radar, in the you know, in the view yeah. of critics of uh, of the USA that normally are are used to a much more like um, conservative narrative films. And it's, it's so strange the response. It's really strange for us. We 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 made a very we f we knew that we. We know that we made a very strange film, you know, like, yeah, it's, 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 it was completely unpredictable for us. Yeah. Right? Also, it's, you have to understand that because we come from the visual art world, mm -hmm. where like basically no one really cares. I yeah. mean, I mean, I do care, but there is like even the most successful visual artist of Germany, I don't know, for say something, it's actually not a, it doesn't have much reactions, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but in film, it's like another level level of like people getting uh, interested in your work. So actually, we were not prepared for that at all. As you mentioned earlier, well, like we are talking about five years of production, right? So yeah. how did all these years of work affect you? Can you tell us like some pros and cons about yeah. this process? Let me start with the pros. Uh, because we we produced the film in a in the this like open studio uh, trip, mm -hmm. uh, in a way it changed our way of understanding the art. It changed the way that we under how we understand what is an art show. Uh, yeah. And this basically, I don't know there, but in there are normally in in Chile and in other parts too, like art shows are. Under, do you understand art shows as 
a place where you hang things or you know you put things and you go yeah. You, you are an artist, you go, you build stuff, and then you go to your house. Mm -hmm. And it's not something alive. Normally, it's more like a, yeah, a, a place of like objects that are being show, shown. But because we were producing all museums and, and art galleries, and we were actually meeting the people that was looking at our works, we realized that it was it has a much, uh, you know, like stronger potential. So we decided something that we will break like immediately, but we decided that we, that we will not make again a sh an art show that doesn't involve mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, like a like something a, alive, something alive. So something that is changing, something that is actually yeah. making that place to to be filled with energy and you know like changing all the time. Of course, then we had a show of paintings mm -hmm. and we were have to travel back, and we cannot you know spend like two months in 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 Amsterdam, because it's actually crazy. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we, in a way, change a lot our way of understanding, uh, yeah, how how art shows work. I don't know if we have a problem of, like, really not being able of um, making self-critique, mm -hmm. but I, I don't regret much of what the the way we did things, you know, like yeah. honestly, I enjoyed the process. It was yeah. like, a, yeah, it was also like it was a, an intense time in terms of life changing time yeah. in different in different ways. Like, for yeah. example, Joaquin became a father twice, twice. Uh, uh, during uh, during during that period. So um, that was the most difficult thing for me. I mean, yeah, like, I started like as a person in love with a woman and I'm still in love with that woman and but now we have two kids so actually I have to be more responsible with my now I have an economy before that I didn't have an economy I had just money coming in sometimes and money coming out yeah. and just like eating and then like putting some fabric on me and <laughs> that kind of, but I was I wasn't thinking you know in economic terms could have been more prepared for these festival things and have like uh, <laughs> like what project ready in order yeah. to to yeah. I don't know like take advantage of the whole situation I must say I'm, I'm very satisfied with the way that we made things I'm, I'm really happy I don't regret much like I I enjoyed every aspect of it and I'm, I'm really proud like yeah, yeah. yeah. mainly we can uh, say about like pros not cons but cons, cons, I mean, cons for me, it's difficult. I, I also have personally this like stupid way of thinking maybe, but I I always have the feeling that every decision that we and the world makes leads me to the point that I am. Of course, that's yeah. cool, best, whatever the name you want to put it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, for me, it's hard to, to be critical about, of course, I made mistakes. I, I'm critical about mm -hmm. my mistakes, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying that even those mistakes or those things are very good mistakes. Are very good. The best. <laughs> oh, no, just saying, yeah. embracing the mistakes, right? The film was was finished. It was premiered. It had. It has. I mean, we are talking now from Chile to Turkey uh, about the film. It's okay. Like every yeah. maybe we, we could be. It, maybe if we were smarter in the process, it would be a, a worse film. Well, you uh, know, you know, when we, when I see it, it, it happens to me that when I see the the amount of things that we made during those five years, like in terms of exhibitions, and we, we made different system of exhibitions, and we created a, a kind of museum of our own where we showed uh, the work of uh, our families. So we made very different, stupid and funny things, and. It was a very productive and creative time. Well, I mean, you didn't do so much mistakes, I think, because we are talking right now, and you also like uh, went uh, different places for just yeah. this specific movie, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we we cannot think about the mistakes at all, I think. Well, thank you. Thank you for <laughs> confirming our feeling, our genius. <laughs> no. No, no. As we wrapping up the interview. I've got like two more questions, if you like. Okay, you have got a lot of experience in the area of animation. On the other hand, our students just started their journey, right? I mean, in the animation industry and the sector itself. So, 
Would you give us some of your recommendations for them? Because we would like to hear, of course. I would say, like, don't try to be, don't play the game of others. I, I like, don't play, don't play to be Pixar. Don't try to be Pixar. You, you know, in, in football, you have this thing of playing local or playing visit. Yeah, yeah. Play uh, uh, visit. You know, play always local. Create your own system of uh, of working. Yeah. We'll feel much more proud if you create your own uh, system. It's it's so much enriching for for you i think or it's been for us like yeah i think that that's the main thing i would say also that there is something about animation that because it's always changing and because you can actually make something with a big team or a one guy one person mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's all well because of the reason that they did whatever reason is uh i have the the feeling and the, the, the idea that animation is always experimental. You should even, you know, like when you think about Walt Disney, the, fir the yeah. first Walt Disney, when the Walt Disney was alive, <laughs> um, he was, of course, a super, a big company and a big name and blah, blah, blah. But he was quite experimental. He was basically creating like techniques and trying to understand what the hell animation was in every single film and you watch i don't know pinocchio which is like a tradition and it's so strange it's a weird piece of animation uh, so every time that you think that you are going to a safe place in animation you should rethink about that because it's not the wow. i mean like, it's always experimental it's yeah. you are creating something why mm. in hell will do ex something that is already done i i so I will recommend if you want to make animation, imagine that it's always an experimental. You are basically saying, please experience something and please get out of your comfort zone, right? Or, or I mean, yeah, or, or the comfort zone of another person. That's yeah. the pro that's the problem. It's good that you know yourself, not in the not in the religious way, not in like going inside of your soul, but I think it's good to understand how your mind or your body or your way of working works. Then you will not cheat yourself or you will not go into something that is painful as a process. For example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we are not good on waiting for the, I mean, we are not patient people. We spend five years working in a stop motion. Yes, in a future, in a future film, yes. But we start with the when we had the idea that we wanted to do with a lot with a budget that was supposed to uh, be expanded in a trailer, you know. Mm -hmm. So we we know that we are not uh, precise, you know, like control freak people. So we work in a way that it feels it it, it feels good to, to us. Mm -hmm. I don't know, my wife is an, she's an artist and she's a perfectionist in many ways. And she works with people that are perfectionists in every time that we talk about her work and I propose something that is a diagonal or something dirty, she look at me like it's not gonna happen in my work. So she likes order, you know, and that's fine. And that's her work. So what I'm trying to say is like, you don't have to be attached to one style, definitely not, but you have to sort of understand how your work and try to create something coming from that and often when you are in the school you you see art or film or animation as a system in which you have to enter like mm -hmm. a system where you have to be successful you know like uh, you have to have a career uh, but i think you you cannot understand animation or you cannot understand any field of the arts as that it's art is something that you do and it's something that you have to and uh, to do radically and um, that, to, to find your way of doing that. I have seen like many animators say like, no, we're crazy. We suffer so much. We work too much. <laughs> like, you don't suffer. If you are suffering in your process, you are in the wrong process, probably. I mean, it's it's like in relationships. So if you have a relationship that it's painful for two years, it's maybe the right moment to stop that relationship, you know, like yeah, it's yeah, yeah. painful. You have to lend your time. On your work right you have to put some hard work i mean this hard work could be called as your time could be called as your experience you have to have the passion i think the passion for yeah. your works or passion for what you do 
Yeah, I guess I, mean, I think you are Iran, like saying it in a more like beautiful way, but I never have a, a doubt about about me working in art. I, I never had this like uh, doubt about it. it. It was not a passion. I mean, of course, when I see it now, it is a passion. Of course, it's like it's like it, it, it what I do. Well, when I see when I see your website, like like your mutual website, I see the passion. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe, but, but for what I'm trying to say is like the, the only thing that you have to do to to be an artist or to be an animator is to wake up in the morning and start doing that. Mm -hmm. And you know, like it's it's for me it was never a a question. So it's not like I'm an artist or not. It's like I'm an artist, of course. I want to do art. I will do art, and I will. It's yeah, and then everything comes with that. Like you go and you work. Honestly, I think when I was a teenager, I honestly thought that people were not not artists because they were they had no, they had they had they have no chance. So in my head, like everyone wants to be oh, an okay. artist. Oh, Just okay. that they I had to realize that, mm -hmm. or they're mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they forced by the family. Like mm -hmm. on, I only thought that everyone wants to be an artist. So if yeah. you want to be a, a, a medic, it's because of the money, or you are shy, or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that. Actually, being an artist is not the best thing in the world for other people. I want to ask my last question. Me and Professor Kaya Tabanlı, who is in charge from a lecture called uh, Computer Aided Design, we suggest to students that you have to have the ability to work together, to work as a team. So how can you describe the importance of teamwork? You probably will have to collaborate if you are an artist and if you are an animator, but it's not mm -hmm. for everyone. I mean, it's possible that you work alone. It's possible I have some friends that work in animation alone. I, mm -hmm. I can a couple of them. We collaborate, uh, of course, a lot. I, uh, we also collaborate with other people and we like that, but it's not, I think, the um, even if, if I see many values on that and I see many virtues of that, it's not that I think that it has to be the case for everyone. It's not yeah. it, it's not a must. In our case, there is a good creative chemistry between us and it's it's it has worked for many years. I mean, we've been mm -hmm. like almost for 15 years working together and it works. But I don't think honestly that it's something that you have to do, like something that is it's the only way of doing it. One of the reasons because I, I started making animations, I think it was because I I, I was very shy at, when I was younger and I was I didn't have many like uh, social skills I think so for me <laughs> no <laughs> making, making making animation was a good way to making films yeah. without having to deal with other people I was in my room you know making my drawings and stuff mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the computer I don't know it was like I, I could create worlds without talking to other people you know? when you work alone you you are reflecting on yourself too much and i think that's that's a bit too dangerous i think that can be like not too uh, enriching and i think when you work with other people it's much clearer that the work is the important thing and it's not yeah. that you are the important thing make a film you create a, a creature is like it's always like a new kind of a uh, being you know it's it's a it's like an animal a monster a frankenstein that you are creating uh, and it's much easier to see that clearly when you work with someone else because yeah. when, when we work in the studio with uh, joaquin is it's very clear that it's not about my things and his things and we have to and this has to do with your previous with what you were saying about patience it's like you have to give time to this thing to grow by itself. You know, you have to, it's like a tree that you put water on it every day and it has mm -hmm. to grow. When you are working in collaboration, you should feel that what the other person or, per, or people or it's uh, adding to the work, it's making the work grow. Even maybe you are wrong, but maybe you are the wrong person for that project, but you should feel that you are you are part of something that is bigger than you and you are not losing things. We push each other to make the work more radical and not yeah. to make it more constrained, you know? Yeah. Mm. And if, if you start pushing, if you, if, if, if the collaboration start making the work more something, I don't know, like in the middle of us, 
and not like more radical, like like yeah. uh, <laughs> wrong. No, it has to be more radical. It's like it's like like two friends saying like, yeah, you have to jump, you have to jump, like, and it's not it's not like it's not like no jump. That's a really this bad example. <laughs> then you die. <laughs> Well, well, maybe. it's about dying, you know. No, that's not <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have, you really have a good sense of humor. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know that when we normally when when we are working, we found the piece, the works and the decisions really funny, mm -hmm. and then for some reason it's always scary at the end. We imagine that it's hilarious what we are doing, and yeah. then it. <laughs> When we put plays like you know, this is not hilarious. This is <laughs> we try actually the the work files. This is a bit On, honest. A bit you know? honest. Yeah. We we're trying to make a comedy, and it, it it's <laughs> it now work. in, in <laughs> the list of like I don't know. Are the, you the... are you serious or is it a joke also? No, no, this is serious. This is serious. We, we were trying to make we a. We knew that we were doing. And, and people like think that. it's it's a horror film, <laughs> and, and for us it was like a super good comedy film, you know, like. <laughs> but people don't get it. <laughs> Yeah, they're really bad jokes. Yeah. No, but honestly, like I think half of the decisions are made thinking they were funny. Well, it surprised me. I mean, <laughs> it literally surprised me right now. <laughs> I, but at some point, we realized that it wasn't actually that funny. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe we can go this, but maybe we will be like uh, always like horror directors, but we will be trying to make comedies for the rest of our lives. Maybe when we succeed, we will make a comedy. How do you, how do you perceive? How do you see your future? Uh, of course, you 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 love to be on the road, not the yeah. final not destination. But how do you see your future in this industry? I mean, I can tell you what we are doing now. Yeah, we okay. are right. Um, we are writing a new film, and this film is not. Um, it's not an animation film. It's a live action film with the um, with the actors and some animation. Yeah, so it's it's a film that combines uh, animation and actors, but mostly actors. You know, like okay. so. Yeah. Not film. So I guess uh, we want to continue making films. We are ambitious people, so we 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 want to become a bit more international. I guess and mm -hmm, to be. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm maybe. Uh, I imagine like a golden <laughs> castle. <laughs> Some days. Um, yeah. So I no, don't know. Yeah, we... But I, I, it's it's hard to tell. We we are we don't. As I said before, we are not very career focused. We, yeah. we try sometimes, but we are very chaotic with that, and um, we will we, we are still we we are making paintings too. So I guess it's not. It's basically, I think we want to continue making what we do, like films and exhibitions, but only to earn more money that we have earned uh, so far. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, the main difference. I think. Yeah, no, it's no, it's true. It's, it's true. true. It's true. I, I, I imagine. I mean, one thing that I enjoy about our last years of uh, practice is that even though we have. I, and I see that we have sort of a, a hand a, or a style. style. We don't believe much in the in the concept of style. Mm -hmm. uh, so I imagine like going to different places and um, this uh, this film that we are writing right now is actually a, a way of going a little bit far from animation. Mm -hmm. uh, in if you don't repeat at least immediately. You ourselves, know, yeah. ourselves. So I imagine like going to different places. That's mainly to try to to imagine ourselves as as open artists and not like a one style artist. But I think it's normally the opposite, mm -hmm. sadly. But I have no idea when. Maybe in three, four years, something yeah. like this. <laughs> have a short film like in April. Yeah. So yeah. we know that for sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Do you yeah. want to see uh, our set? Yeah, I, I will course, move the camera. Of course, I would like I would. to. Yeah. So we are shooting in 16 millimeters. Okay. But so in digital because we don't know how to animate in 16 millimeters without the <laughs> digital camera. So we are now working in a different uh, way. Wow. We made yeah. latex copies of ourselves. Yeah. This is Chris. 
me, this is a version. Well, sort of. <laughs> um, with glasses. So we are this we are working with uh, with actual film like with celluloid and this yeah. is something mm -hmm. this is something new for us we had never animated in in real film before we always made digital we, we worked with celluloid before but not for animation um so we are very excited about that and this is we, we are trying to make a film that it looks like it's made uh, in the in the beginning of the 20th century so this is this will be like the first animation of history. It's a bit. It's a it's a film that uh, in a way interprets uh, the um, the historical and political moment of Chile. One year ago, some kind of social revolution started in in our country, like something that it's very um, it's been very important and very shocking for us. You know, Chile has been historically very socially segregated. You have yeah, like very yeah, like yeah. rich people and then like poor very poor people yeah. and and this revolution uh, has a lot to do with this and so uh, we are doing this film in a way to um, to create some kind of ritual or some kind of ceremony uh, to uh, conduct to to focus our energy and our feelings about these things i'm, I'm uh, it's I'm, i sound very serious now but the, but it's a uh, it's it's we are serious. We are serious about that, but also in a very funny way. So we are trying to include ourselves in the work and also include some very important uh, historical figures of Chile. We designed this uh, our own uh, skeleton, but it's it's like a real size skeleton because yeah, normally yeah. stop motion puppets are really like twenty five centimeters. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, so, but this, this one is like real one. This uh, this one is real one, and, and it <laughs> works quite well. It works. Yeah. yeah. We made copies of our bodies and. We so, also work with some real bones and some animal bones, well, human bones and animal bones. Uh, to uh, yeah, these are like something in between of uh, ourselves and these historical figures that uh, yeah. that we mentioned before. We got this this house that is going to be uh, demolished, so we were able to make like a, for example, a hole in the. Um, that was a wall. That that was a wall, and then we made. There is a we, wall there. Oh, okay. Uh, we made that hole, and we we animated that. Thank you so much for letting us to see your work. It really <laughs> means a lot to us. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. you. We we enjoy always uh, showing our studio. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what to say more, but I just only express my like good intention to you for letting us to see your studio for letting us to get to know you a bit more you know it really means a lot to us thank you so much for this one thank you oh, so much from welcome. bottom of our hearts <laughs> no th thank you for reaching out and yeah uh, say hi to all your students thank you so much if you want to say something turkish i can teach you right now you are not uh, making a making say something shameful or <laughs> no, no 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 <laughs> you can you can you can count on me i'm not i'm not that kind of guy <laughs> so maybe you can you can say like goodbye to turkey goodbye turkey okay. or something okay. else okay it's a bit it's a bit like forceful enough uh, but it is called görüşürüz can you say it? Gohrus. Shu. Gereshu. Rus. Gereshu Rus. Gereshu Rus. Gereshu Turkey. Gereshu Rus Turkey. Wow, it it was it was really good. Thank you so much. <laughs> Very natural. Yeah. Gereshu Turkey. <laughs>